So listen, um, uh, if you're new, uh, come back next week and you hear the, the, the pastor that, you know, really um, helps us out a lot, all right? <laughs> but anyways, listen, um, uh, there's a big game today. Yeah. You know, it, don't you know about the big game? It starts at 11 o'clock, so I'm going to try to get you guys out of here early. You know, um, I never got into soccer until, you know, my, until my son-in-law you know, um, came into our lives, and um, now, you know, uh, you know, it's Croatia and uh, France, and we got a big bet going on right now. I'm all for Croatia, Croatia right now, you know, yeah, 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 see that? Yeah, baby. Um, but anyways, um, uh, that's uh, happening, so I'll, I, you, you, like you're saying, who cares, you know, since the USA's not in it? Okay, I understand. But listen, <laughs> listen, uh, uh, you can see our message is uh, growing with Jesus. You know, you can see the, these uh, vines are getting bigger each week, uh, more and more. I mean, I guess something's happening, and I'm not sure where it's going to go. Um, hopefully, it, it, um, it will end soon. I mean, uh, <laughs> but growing with Jesus. Now, the last couple of weeks, you know, Jeff's, I love the messages that Jeff's been speaking about, about habits and discipline and all that good stuff. I mean, to me, um, I'm all about that. Ask my kids. They know me. I mean, I, I have some good habits. I think I have more good habits than bad habits. But um, I, I could talk about habits like crazy, and they know it too, and the discipline, what it takes. Because being an athlete, I mean, we were conditioned to, to have unbelievable discipline, all right? And I could talk about that. And guess what I got to talk about today? And this, like, really is like, like someone says good luck to this. I mean, I was talking to one of my uh, uh, youth uh, uh, girls, and um, she goes, hey, good luck, uh, Pete. Um, I have to talk about pain and suffering. <laughs> wow, you're looking at me like, yeah, I know, huh? All right, I mean, I had the same reaction too when uh, Jeff told me, but the thing is this, growing does take pain, all right? All right, you're gonna go through, you're gonna go through pain in life. You're gonna be, um, you know, uh, through life, you're gonna have um, difficulties, you know, suffering. So that's my topic today, pain and suffering. Uh, you know, how can I get closer to Jesus and grow with Jesus through pain and suffering? And, and, and this is a tough subject. I mean, I, um, for me, um, you're probably looking at me and you're saying, uh, man, Pete, you got it all together. You know, you see me here, happy all the time, excited, always admit, cracking jokes, having fun, every time, stuff like that. But you have no idea, and you, you're going to have a little taste, I'm not going to give you all of it, about my life. And you're going to understand why I am who I am today because of my past and some of the pain I had to go through. And it was growing pain, a lot of growing pain, a lot of suffering. And um, um, th they asked this question um, to the people, like, if you had an opportunity to talk to God, um, what would you say? And you know what the number one uh, question was? Why is there so much pain and suffering in this world? That's the number one question. Is that amazing? All right. I don't know about you. I mean, I, I want to know too. I mean, like, if, you know, we got God out and he's so good and mighty and all this and stuff. I mean, why is there all this pain and suffering? And um, does it surprise you because of that answer? You know, people, I mean, I question, like people want to know. I mean, it doesn't surprise me because you see a lot. I mean, just turn the news on. I mean, and, and uh, you start realizing, you know, what? <laughs> there's a lot of stuff that's happening, a lot of junk, you know? And, um, we're all going to go through it. We're all, we, we, I mean, it's just a matter of time. I was talking to, this week, to a lot of young people about pain and suffering, and I want to know if they've experienced some, and not really, not much, very little. But as you get older, I guess, what do you want, I don't want to use the word seasoned, <laughs> you know. Well, I, well that, that was, the, I mean, um, it, it, you get, like, you start realizing more about what life is all about. You know, because we're so early. I, um, the one book, um, Falling Upward, it talks about like, when you're young, you're, you're building a container. You're trying to find an identity of who you are, and you're trying to, um, you know, make a life for yourself and do this and that and stuff. And all of a sudden, and the biggest thing is probably at the time I was trying to build my ego because I had a real self-low ego growing up because of um, my circumstances. And what happened was, um, as you get later on in life, and I learned this at a real later age, probably like in my 40s probably, that uh, I started realizing all that stuff doesn't matter. 
all right? And, and there's a, another part of life that's more important than, you know, trying to build your ego and trying to do this and that and stuff. And I, I just want to let you know, um, it, it's a great book. If you, I, I recommend it, Falling Upward. But um, Jesus said in John 16, 33, we will have suffering. That's John 16, 33. We will have suffering. He mentions that. Jesus talks about it. We will have suffering. And, um, but why? All right. Why? You know, and I'll give you a simple answer. Four words. All right. I do not know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not being serious. I don't know. I mean, and you know what? Nobody else knows. I mean, you, you, and you could hear all these, this, and because I've heard, her not, believe me, like again, I've been around, I've heard all these reasons why there's pain and suffering in this world, but you know what? Well, when we uh, meet, meet Jesus, you know, we'll have that, uh, you know, question answered. And um, how I know is God is God. <laughs> um, he made us, he created us, and there's things that he does that I, I um, you know, like he's, he's a lot bigger than me. And a lot of times, um, um, I, I, and I like Jeff's uh, an, analogy about, um, you know, like we're here and we always have these blinders on and we always want this in our life. And, you know, God's back looking down and saying, man, I got you. I got the big picture. You just don't understand yet. And sometimes, you know, you're going through some trials and some pain and suffering and, and, and you're saying, why God? And I, and I wrote this down, um, um, God, um, we always say, get me out of this situation, out of this predicament. You know, get me out of it. And uh, to me, I kind of change it to, uh, God, what do you want me to get out of this? And I tell the youth a lot of the times, is like, you, lo you look at situations, why this is happening. And, I, I, and again, it, and I make it a little, I keep it simple. So this is going to be a simple message. I keep it simple to the youth. I say, hey, what are you trying to show me? All right, because we're all going to go through this pain and suffering. And, and a lot of times, I, I know it's hard. It's just a hard subject. And, and I'm, I'm going to try to go through because, you know, I'm a very emotional guy. Um, that's probably one of the reasons that, you know, I, I played football because of my emotions. I mean, I put my helmet on, I'm going to hit somebody. <laughs> you know, I, I really am. I mean, uh, you play with a lot of emotion. Anybody plays sports, you play with a lot of heart and emotion. And, um, and so I always say, okay, what are you trying to show me? And um, I, I know I, I have a hard time looking at my stuff in this, my glasses. I, I, bear with me. But um, here, here's the thing. <clears throat> I could talk about myself a little bit today. But I don't want you guys to compare you with me. Because you're going to have your own road to go on. All right? And, and I'm going to talk a little bit about my road because you have to understand, because a lot of people see me, oh man, you got this going for you, this is happening, oh, you're, man, and, and you know what? You have no idea that, um, some of the stuff I had to go through, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about that, just briefly, all right? And um, uh, usually suffering pain is by a loss or your health. Am I right? Like you usually have, like, I mean, I, I know we all have a little bit like struggles. We're all going through some struggles, but I'm talking about suffering and pain. And you have that pain through grief, um, s loss, sorrow, failure, um, because, um, of a, because of a job. Maybe you lost a job or your finances, you're, you're, you're struggling with your finances or you're, you might be losing your house or maybe an animal. A close, uh, your dog or something. I my, my, my daughter, when she lost her horse, it was unbelievable. Um, maybe your marriage, loss uh, of a marriage, uh, of a spouse, a loved one. Um, I, I mean, you could, whatever you want to plug in there. And, and, and the next thing is your health. You know, your health, you know, suffering. And, and <clears throat> I've been through all of it. Um, and some of you know my story a little bit and some of you don't and I mean um, but the two things I want you to touch uh, I, that I want to touch on that I want you to get out of this message today on pain and suffering is this um, don't be surprised yeah, and, and I know you're going to say well th th you know this happened unexpectedly I know that I know that and, 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 but um, 
Peter talks about it in um, 1 Peter, in, in, a, um, in a whole thing about suffering. I, I think when, uh, when the Christians were going through persecution uh, through the Roman Empire and, and Nero, he was the, the emperor at the time, and uh, he, um, he, he wanted to prepare the Christians that you know, they, they were getting scattered because they, they were, again, tortured and killed and everything. And he, and he, talked, he talked like, like uh, what is it, how many chapters? Like f- five, five chapters in Peter um, about the suffering that you're going to come up with. I mean, so it, it, we're going to have that. So don't be surprised. It's going to happen. And, I, and I'm not going to say, hey, be ready for it, because you're, you're going to see some stuff in my life that I wasn't ready for it. All right? That's one thing. And the next thing is, um, how, how are you going to respond? You know, how are you going to react? And, and, um, um, and that's the biggest thing. Um, at the time, you're going to see I acted stupid, <laughs> uh, um, like a little kid, upset, Mad. I was mad at God. Like, why? You know? I, I, I mean, and, and, and it's okay to shout at God. It's okay. <laughs> you know? And um, so anyways, I want to talk about, um, when it, like, I guess my, my biggest suffering, I was 17 years old. All right? Um, <clears throat> I grew up on a farm. You know, most of you, I grew up in Monongahela on a farm, 170 acre farm. And... Um, I was 17 years old, and I was uh, hunting. Uh, our school was on strike, so I did my chores during the morning. I had most of my chores done. I went hunting with my bird dog, and um, that afternoon, it was a night, nice, bright, sunny day, and what happened was, is um, I saw this other guy in the woods, and he kept on following me, and I stopped on this pipeline, and, and uh, there was a plateau, and I stopped right on that plateau, and what happened was, is um, uh, right... Um, and there's a real big ravine, like about a 14, 15 foot ravine. And I stopped right in the back of it. And all of a sudden he came up to me and he started talking to me, this guy. Seemed like a nice guy, everything. And I, I remember every detail of that day, everything. So what happened was, is, um, I remember I looked at my watch. I, I could tell you everything. I mean, I could, just, oh, I could write a book on that whole day. And um, I looked at my watch. I said, listen, I got to get going. I'm going to be late for practice. So what happened was, is, um, I turned around and I walked to the edge of that ravine. I started going halfway down that ravine. So the only thing that you could see was from my waist up. And we were probably about from here to that doorway. And um, I heard a shot. And the guy shot me. All right. He shot me in the back of the head. I fell down that ravine. So he was back here. So when I fell down, he couldn't see me. So he thought he killed me. And um, so what happened was, is, um, <coughs> Out of instinct, I remember going up and grabbing my head, and I started realizing, um, you know, I, I felt the blood, and, and I looked down, and I saw all the blood and hair, and I started saying, man, I, I have been shot, and I heard, the, I, and I couldn't hear, the ringing in my ear was unbelievable, and all of a sudden, I'm looking, and I just all had blood and hair in my hand, I was, and I, I started to shake, my whole body was start uh, shaking, I turned around, I remember I took my safety off my gun, and there was nobody there, and all of a sudden, he, then he walked, and he was shocked to see me standing. Now, very first thought in my head, very first thought, 17 years old. So, that, I mean, I can relate to teenagers a lot, is the image. All right? I wanted to know if I had an ear left. All right? Because I'm thinking, I'm not only going to school walking around with, with like one ear, and, my, and I'm trying, I have nothing to hook my glasses on. I had glasses. <laughs> See? I'm being serious. <laughs> that was my very first thought. You know, you're, it's true. That was my very, I'm thinking, I hope I have an ear left. After I found out I had an ear left, and it was all shredded, and it had a bunch of holes in it, then I'm thinking, I'm gonna, they're going to tease me because they thought I got my ears pierced. Um, I mean, I had a ton of holes in this ear right here, a ton, all kind of holes. And you know, back then, it wasn't cool to have an earring or uh, any kind of earrings back then. And all of a sudden, I mean, just think today, I could, I could have been real cool with all those holes in my ear, you know? I mean, <laughs> I'm being serious. I mean, now I look back like, wow. Like, but it, I was devastated, you know? I was devastated. I mean, that was my very first thought about my image, all right? <clears throat> um, so anyways, what happened was, is, um, uh, make a long story short, 
um, I got up out of the I told him to get out of here. I, and I'm, I'm cutting this real short because of time. I, 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 I climbed up out of the ditch. He went in one direction, and I started realizing it was too far to go back to my parents' house. It was about two miles away. And there was another option I had. It was going up into my um, uh, aunt's house, which was straight up a hill. And I don't know what you want to call it or whatever. I mean, you talk about uh, intervention or, or uh, having a chance to be with God or whatever. I mean, it, but this moment right here got me closer to the Lord. I, I, I felt his presence. I mean, I felt something touch me. And I don't know how to explain it because I could, t- I could explain everything about that day, but I don't know how I got from, from where I was to the top of that hill. And um, you, 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 whatever, I mean, you, you, you fill in the blanks. I mean, to me, it was a miracle. I call it a miracle because I, I should never have been up that hill. I mean, even in my best shape, I don't think I could get up that hill that fast or be up there. I, I lost a lot of blood. And um, and make a long story short, short um, a week later, um, I, um, I played in a football game a week later with a head injury. And I don't know what my parents were thinking, you know. <laughs> I have no idea. I mean, I, I have kids. I, I would never let my kids do something like stupid like that. But they knew my heart. But that day, I look back now. See, I look back now. It was probably one of the worst days of my life. But it turned out to be one of the best because I, I probably wouldn't be up here today. All right? I, I guarantee it. I probably wouldn't be up here today because I, um, I, I went to, when I was growing up, I went to a Russian Orthodox. So half of it was in Russian. So I didn't get nothing out of it. I had no relationship with the Lord. I mean, I, I wasn't seeking him. I didn't care. I mean, you, when you're a teenager, you don't think about that stuff. And, and, and what happened was, is um, one of the worst days of my life turned into be one of my best days because through that, um, I, when I got out of the hospital, I was wanting to know more about this God because nobody else could save me. My parents could save me, my relatives, nobody, my friends, nobody was there. But I knew God was there. I don't know how to explain it, whatever. And, um, you know, you go through pain, what, to maybe sometimes go through, to, to mold you, to, to give you some character or whatever. And, and I think through that whole process, it gave me a lot of character. Um, and uh, I think uh, my faith got deeper because of the, of the pain. And, and, and I look back now, I look back now, you know, you know, Jeff talked about losing his dad at 17. Before my accident in July, his dad um, passed away at 46. And, and I remember Jeff was one of my closest friends and he was devastated. And I don't know, I mean, maybe because of um, his pain, <laughs> what happened to me in October, um, Maybe uh, he, he took his eyes off himself and he started realizing, hey, here's his best friend, almost died. And it, it kind of, I, I, I don't know, I mean, maybe that was the reason. I, you know, you could, you could say all kinds of reasons. I look back now and I could give you a lot of reasons why maybe that, why it happened to me. I don't know. But I know, all I could say it was probably my worst day turning my best. You know, at the time I was going through that struggle, through that pain and suffering, I didn't wish it on my worst enemy. I, what I was, I mean, what I was going through. And, um, and like I says, I wouldn't probably be here today because of it. <clears throat> and I know, you know, you're going through some pain and suffering and no amount of words will ever help you through it. Like, I know you're, like, as a best friend, might be with you and, and sometimes you, even a friend can't even say what you're going through because they don't even know, you know? And um, all I know is... Um, tell you that God is powerful and he's with us all the time. If he's with you, he knows you more than a friend. Think about that. I mean, your, your, this, your spirit's with you all the time. Your, God knows you more than your, any of your best friends. I've been married to my wife 32 years. She knows me unbelievable. She knows all my good and bad habits, everything about me. She knows all my little perks and, and uh, quirks and all that other good stuff. But you know what? She still doesn't know me like the way God knows me because he's with each one of us and we don't even know it sometimes. And, and um, all I know is like he was with me that day and he's always with each one of us. He's with us all the time. And, and, but the thing is, you know, you know, throughout the day, like, as things are going good, we don't even think about them. Only time we, it's amazing, when through, you're going through some tough times, I, you, you, you're always on your hands and knees. I am, at least, or I'm, I'm talking to God, or I'm seeking him out more through those tough times. <clears throat> That's 17 years old. At, um, 
22, I just turned 22. My birthday's in a couple weeks. I just turned 22 in July. Um, I was um, in uh, the Steeler training camp as a rookie. Um, they switched me from a linebacker in college. I played linebacker in college to an offensive tackle, which is unheard of. You know, and if anybody knows football, I mean, it's, it's, it's insane. Um, chances of making a team was so slim. They already drafted two guys that were offensive linemen, one from UCLA, which is a big school, and the other one from Baylor. I had not even a chance to make the team. Um, going to, in the training camp, and um, very first game, we played the, and which is, you know, the Hall of Fame game. We were playing the New Orleans Saints in Canton, Ohio. And guess what? I got in in the fourth quarter. They put me in in the fourth quarter. And uh, I was doing good. I thought I was doing good. And all of a sudden, um, our ball carrier um, got the ball, and he was coming right behind me. And um, he got tackled, and the guys rolled up on my leg and, and busted up my knee pretty bad. All right? Pain. Suffering. I was in a lot of pain. And I remember, this is it. I'm done. No more football. I don't know what I'm going to do. I, I, you know, um, I, I, I wasn't sure what direction. I was, I was devastated, I was like losing my job. You know, but, but <laughs> what chances I had making a team? I was a free agent, you know, switched from a linebacker. I never played the offensive line in my life trying to make the team. Unheard of. Against the, with the Steelers, one of the best teams that, that were around. And they had probably the best line. Uh, that They had all these all pro guys that were unbelievable. I mean, Mike Webster and Larry Brown and uh, Tunch and Wolf and all these guys, uh, uh, Steve Corson, and they, 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 they were just like animals. They were unbelievable. I, what are my chances of making a team? And um, um, <clears throat> after the game, I'm in a locker room and um, I had a couple of veterans come up to me and they say, hey, good job. Good job, man. You did good. Good job. And then there was a, only a couple just says, hey, good job, man. You made a team. Good job. I'm thinking, what? I made the team. Good job. You made a team. And at the time, I didn't know it. See, like, you know, like, I, I look back at this. I'm thinking, wow, if it wasn't for that injury, I will never had a chance to play for the Steelers. Never. In my wildest dreams. Because of uh, that injury, they put me on IR, injury reserve. So that, when you are an IR, they have to pay you your salary and you have to get um, uh, healed up. Then you go to practice. And, and then it took me um, uh, probably like three-fourths of the season to get healed up. Then finally I went back to practice and it was already in. I, so I had to learn, I, it gave me a chance to learn the system, um, learn, the, you know, learn the plays, learn my players. The guys were around me, rallying around me and stuff. I came back next year and I had a chance of going to break into the starting lineup my second year. And um, um, at the time, again, I was going through that pain and suffering and I didn't realize it. Um, <clears throat> October 18th, 2001, 17 years ago. Whew, this is where it gets tougher for me um, because I was talking about myself, but what happened was is, um, I'm working with my dad on a job site. Um, uh, and we're in the reclamation, uh, doing a lot of cold jobs and stuff. And what happened was, um, back then we had a, a bag phone, and we, we, we'd get a phone call. It was my mom saying that my sister passed away, head-on head -on collision. And she was two years older than me. And, and I was real close to her. I'm, I'm closer to her than I would my younger sister right now. But I, I, we're close now, very close, because we have each other. But the thing is, is um, my sister... Man, she, she had a boy and a girl, and, and it, I was devastated. My sister, how can she pass away at 42? She was 42 years old when it happened. And um, um, and, and, and the thing was, is, um, I had more grief over my parents. Seeing my parents grieve. I, I, I can't even imagine losing a son or daughter. It was tough. I mean, I, was, I, I, I felt sorrow. My, I lost my sister, but just seeing what my parents were going through, tough. Tough. Um, 
I, like I said in First Peter, you know, Peter talks about the suffering we're going to acquire. It, it, that's part of life. But um, move on, March 5th, 2005. Oh, wait, let me back up. Before that, in, um, in July of 2004, my dad had to go in, all right? He got checked up in, in August. He got operated on in 2004 for an aneurysm. You got to understand something about my dad and me. We were real close. I mean, at the time, growing up, the reason uh, I played football because to get away from him. <laughs> it's the truth. He worked me so hard. Um, I just wanted to get off the farm. I, I had no intentions of playing football. You know, I had no intentions of playing football. My, my whole attention was trying to get off the farm because he worked me so hard. I mean, again, uh, you talk about a blessing. You know, I had a lot of pain on the farm. You don't realize the pain I went through on the farm. He, he was tough on me. And throughout the years, after I got done playing football, we worked together. And he was my, one of my best friends. And my, my wife would really get upset with me because I would work with him all day. Then at nighttime, I would call him on the phone. And he would call me and we would talk. And she would get so upset with me because um, I spent more time with him than he, I spent with her. <laughs> so anyways, um, he was diagnosed with an aneurysm. He had the operation in August, very successful, but when they came out, the doctor said, um, <clears throat> uh, said uh, I have some good news and bad news. The good news is the operation was great. Bad news is we found cancer. He has eight months to live. Mm. But anyways, I saw my dad in eight months go from 230 down to 135 pounds suffering. Unbelievable suffering. The last three months of his, uh, um, uh, before his death, I took off. I spent every day with my dad. I, I was in the hospital with my dad every day, seeing him suffer. When he suffered, I was suffering. And I, sometimes I was thinking like how God sees us suffer sometimes and he's going through the same pain. I was seeing my dad suffer. And... Um, So anyways, the neatest thing was, that day when he died, he died in my arms. I remember this. It was so neat. He came up to me, he went like this to me, and he put his head on my, right on my chest. And he goes to me, he goes, I'm going to go home. And I, and I said, Dad, I can't take you home. And he, because we're the hospital, Monongahela Hospital was right across the hill from the farm. And I know he was looking out at the farm, but I didn't realize what he was saying. He goes, I want to go home. And all of a sudden, he put his head right on my chest, and I'm hugging him, and he takes two breaths, and he passes away. He died right in my arms. Unbelievable. Whew, tore me up. Tore me up. You know, pain and suffering, but probably the, one of the best things, I, 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 I would do it all over again. All right? Uh, I would do it all over again. <clears throat> November 1st, 2013. My mom had Parkinson's for 20 years. She didn't show it. I mean, she, she struggled through it. <clears throat> and I, I, just, I, won't, I won't talk about my mom too much because, um, I mean, uh, because of time-wise. But um, I, same thing, I was with her all the time. When my dad passed away in 2005, for eight years, I parked my truck, my work truck, up to the farm. I went up there every day. Every day I went up there with, and, and I saw my mom every day. Had a cup of coffee with her and took off. I would get up like 4 o'clock in the morning. Uh, and I mean, I would be up there at 4 o'clock, and she would be up there. She would have a pot of coffee on for me. I would take a pot. I wouldn't drink it all, but that was a habit she made, you know, for my dad. I would have a cup of coffee, see her, go to work, all right, and come back and park the truck for eight years. Um... I told you this is going to be tough, tough. Um, and, and the thing is, I mean, I, I'm just going through the little snippets. I, I, I mean, I had some real close relatives that passed away, friends that passed away. You're going to go through pain and suffering, guys and girls. I, I, I'm just telling you that. It's part of life. Um, but in, in this... Um, let me finish the passage of John 16, 33, the whole passage. 
It says, I have told you all this so that you will have peace of heart and mind. And through this, the passage, I, here's two things I get out of it. God gives us peace right now for the present through these tough times because I don't know how you deal with pain and suffering. Everybody deals with it a little bit differently. But my, 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 the thing is, um, but God's there through right now present for that peace, to have peace someone to turn to and it says on earth you will have many trials and sorrows but cheer up for I have overcome the world so in the future he gives us courage and that's the one thing I, I could bank on I have put my hope on my faith in is because I have the courage to move on and, and smile at you guys smile on to my family and stuff and say hey, hey you know better days are coming it's all good all right. Um, <clears throat> you know, another passage I, I wanted to read this. It's in Psalms 34, 18. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. All right. So, you know, <clears throat> we're all going to go through some suffering and pain. And, and that's the neatest thing. I love this. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and save those who are crushed in spirit. I'm, I get down. You know, you always see me always happy and stuff like that, but I have my moments. A righteous man may have many troubles. See, he talks about even if you're even good, you're doing everything good and everything, you're still going to have trouble. And it says, but the Lord delivers him from them all. <clears throat> I just want to finish up and say, listen, um, you know, you, you see, like, um, I'm, I'm kind of tan. I was um, belling hay all week. I was making hay. And, um, and it, it, in one of our fields, there's this one tree. And I hated this tree. It's the hardest thing to work around, to cut around. To, the, uh, I remember plowing. I'm thinking, when I get old, when my parents pass away, I'm going to... Knock this tree over. It, it's the worst. They asked, asked Luke, you know, it, it, um, it, it's a misery to cut around it and everything. It's so hard to work around this one tree, but it's there for a reason. And I didn't realize this. Um, this tree went through a lot of stuff. And I, I, I look back and, and researched about why farmers keep one tree in a field. I got, came up with all kinds of answers. That's it right there. <laughs> and I said, one day, I'm going to knock this tree over. And, and, and you know, for a living, I, I do a lot of reclamation, you know, dirt jobs and stuff. And, and trees that are by themselves are the hardest trees to push over. They are the hardest. You know why? Because they're rooted in. They're rooted in deeper. They get all the rain. My son-in-law said something. I, I was telling him about my message. And he, I said, you have any advice? He says, just remember, to have nice flowers, it has to rain. <laughs> so true. We're all going to have some rain in our life. All right? It's all some tough winters, some bad winds, some bad twisters up on a farm. We had some unbelievable twisters up on a farm. It went through a lot. And guess what? It's still standing. And I understand the reason they have a, a tree, they would cut a limb off to make a, a handle or something because they know that's the strongest tree. That one, well, there's two trees there. Like, the one tree was, is a locust. And locust is probably some of the best wood, the hardest wood. Because when we put posts in, fence posts, that's all we use, locusts. It, they, they last for 100, there's posts on our farm that are over 100 years old, a I mean, locust post. And, um, and then... Because um, they didn't want to touch that one tree, there was a cherry tree that grew up right next to it. So I guess they were afraid to cut the cherry tree down. So there's, there's two trees. They're, they're like the, it's funny how the cherry tree grew around the locust tree right there. And, um, and that's why they plant a tree by itself. Um, that tree goes through a, a lot of seasons. Think about this. And, and I think about like how people, you know, we, it goes through the spring. And, you know, and, and I, I'm comparing a, a tree to uh, us maybe, a spring, like... The, the newness of a sp spring, how things uh, sprout up. Like, you know, when you're little, you get your first bike or you get, so you're, you get older, your first car or, or your first date or your first marriage or, or your first baby or whatever. That's spring. Summer, 
you, you, um, you're, you're cruising life, man. Things are happening. You know, you go on vacations. You, you have a chance to go home to, to today and, and go um, watch the game or uh, just rest or just chill, go to the pool, whatever. You know, summer. Fall, <clears throat> you go through transitions in life. Um, maybe um, through college, a new job, maybe a, a different house. You know, the change, change of, of fall, the, you know, losing leaves. Wintertime um, is the tough times. You know, when it's cold, windy, snowing, no sun. <laughs> there's like, I know there's no sun a lot of times in the summertime, but, <laughs> but, but, um, but no sun there. But it, it's still growing. And I just want to say, hey, we're all going to keep, going to keep growing. And, and you, know, you know, growing. Um, so I, I want to say is, don't be surprised when stuff happens. Be ready, you know. I, I, you know, stuff is going to happen. And how are you going to respond? You know, like, I, I, and you hear this all the time. A lot of times you see a mother, um, her child gets hit by a drunk driver. And she's bitter, outraged, just torn. I get it, man. I, 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 man I, I, those feelings come across. But then you see another mother, same thing, situation, and all of a sudden she starts some kind of thing, um, mothers against drunk drivers and stuff. I mean, I, I'm just using that for one example. There's so many other things. How are you going to handle it? You know, and, and, and I learned right now, okay, what are you trying to show me? I, maybe, Tommy, you may not get an answer. You might never get an answer. I don't know. But maybe down the road, it might take years and years or something you, or whatever. But I'm just saying it's like, okay. So many things had, I'm, I could go back on and say, hey, I look back and say, hey, now nah, I can see why you allowed this to happen. I, I shouldn't say he allowed it, but I mean, this happened in my life. He didn't allow nothing. You know? But um, we all deal through pain and suffering through, you know, I don't want you guys to get depressed. <laughs> I'm looking at like a lot of sad faces here. Like, but um, we all go through pain and suffering in different ways in how you handle it, I mean, in how you're going to respond. Um, can I have the band come up? Um, the thing is, is um, sometimes it's through music. Just get, I, I love music. You know, I can't sing worth a lick. I can't play worth a lick, but I love to listen to music. And, and um, and this song really touched me. I, I took the youth um, to the, uh, the movie. Um, the, the, the band is Mercy Me. The head, head uh, lead singer. Um, he, um, the movie is called um, I Could Only Imagine. All right, that's the name uh, of the movie. A great, I, I recommend it. I took to the youth there and it just shows you how powerful it was. My, my, our, you know, our drummer, Deke, I mean, he was all teared up, man. I mean, I, could, I, had to, I had to comfort him. I mean, I had to put my arm around him and say, it's okay, Dick, it's, it's only a movie. He was all teared up and it just shows you how powerful it was. And, the, and the, even the youth, I'm looking at the youth and I see them walk right when they're uh, tears away and stuff. But they, they sung another song, Even If. All right, I'm not going to let you say, hear that one. I can only imagine. But he went through a lot of pain and suffering. You, you, you got to see the movie, a true story. I, I recommend it. He went through a lot of pain and suffering. And because of that pain and suffering is who he is today and what he's doing and how he's touching millions of people. And um, um, uh, I, I want you to hear the song. And, and, and when you hear, but, but listen to the words. All right. And um, enjoy it. Say sometimes you win some, sometimes you lose some, and right now, right now I'm losing that. I stood on the stage night after night, reminding the broken. Right now, right now, I just can't. 
when there's nothing to bring me down. great song. Um, I wish you'd um, leave on a happier note, whatever, <laughs> but uh, I hope you like leave like I usually come to church to get uh, revived and uh, <laughs> get excited and stuff. But um, I got to tell you one more thing. You know, Jeff says, um, just be yourself and, um, and I'm bearing everything. I, 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 this is me. And um, just want to let you know, um, you know, you see me up here and you have no idea some of the stuff going through and stuff. Like right now, um, June 6th, went up to saw her parents and um, up in Connecticut. And um, what happened was is, um, a little bug, a tick, bit me. Um, I got Lyme disease 
And um, yeah, and I'm, don't, and I'm saying this not to feel sorry. Please don't. I, I mean, I'm good. I'm good. And, and I'm on my second treatment of antibiotics, whatever. And, um, and I'm thinking, how can that little bugger, that little thing, put me down? You don't realize, like, what I, I mean, Luke knows, and my, Lydia, they know how I am. And um, I got aches and pains right now. And um, I go lifting with my son. And um, I'm not sure it's from him lifting uh, with him or <laughs> is it from the tick, whatever, because I'm sore. My, all my joints hurt and everything like that. I mean, I'm getting some bad headaches and stuff. I don't wish on anybody, but I, you know what? I'm saying this for a reason. I mean, you see me up here and you think, oh, yeah, Pete got everything. And no. We're all going to go through pain and suffering. And um, again, I don't know how everybody deals with it. It might be through some music or being by yourself or getting with a friend, whatever. You have to figure that out. But all I know is God's there with us all the time because He's with us here 24 7. And, and He's the one that says, Give us peace right now to have peace. I do. I do have peace. And looking down the road, having courage, hey, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. I don't know why it happened. I grew up on a farm. Never got bit in my life. I've been around animals. I slept with animals. I'm not what you should say. I mean, <laughs> I should say, um, I mean, on a farm, when an animal's sick, you sleep with, you know, like, I hope you understand. I mean, I should stop. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm just saying is like, that sucks. You know, sorry. I mean, I'm just, um, I'm just saying this. We, we get a lot of sick animals on our farm and, and, and you, you stay up all night and you're with them, right next to them. And I never got ever gotten bitten by anything. And all of a sudden I go up and help her parents weed a garden out and, and, and you know, a tick bites me. It's crazy. And all the hunting I did in my life around animals, hunting, you know, um, crazy. But anyways, I want to let you know, um, enjoy the day. Pete, Pete, all right. show the tree. Oh. That's right. I, I'm sorry, Lydia. Th this tree right here, uh, last year I took a picture of it, and it was the most unbelievable thing. And you guys see this picture right here. Sunset. Doesn't that look like the burning bush, burning tree? Whew. Powerful. I look at that on the farm. I had an opportunity a couple times because of working late to see that unbelievable you know think about what a tree has to go through we're the same way man we're gonna go through some good bads but guess what we'll get through it you know and that's when we have each other to help each other through it but let's pray um lord we just thank you thank you for who you are thank you for your love thank you that you're with us all the time sometimes we don't know it but I know you're always there. You know, every tear that I shed, that you're shedding with me. I know that. Some stuff that we don't understand, but that's okay. I mean, maybe, you know, it's, it's good that we don't understand. But I know one thing, Lord, that um, I know you, you'll comfort me through this. Give me peace. And neat thing is that down the road in the future, give me courage to keep pressing on. And we just thank you for that and thank you for this opportunity to be with everybody today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Okay.